Uh, she's cheeky. Yeah. So she sees an ugly ass squirrel like you, then she goes into hunting mode. I'm considered good looking amongst my kind. Well, I know a bunch of good looking squirrels. You ain't one. Okay, of. all right, guys, what is the play here? Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Secret Invasion from Disney Plus uh, Marvel. Uh, and it's the first episode called Resurrection. Now, if you didn't watch the episode, please go back. Stop this, go back and watch the episode. And then come back. Unless you like really like spoilers. Do that like, now. Yeah, do it now. Uh, so, uh, like I said, episode one resurrection and the synopsis for this particular episode is Nick Fury learns of a clandestine invasion of earth by a faction of shape shifting scrolls, which is very short to the point, but this is also just the introduction of the, uh, secret invasion. Now with anything when we we cover these things we're we're going to discuss uh, our initial thoughts so rob what was your initial thoughts on the first episode here's what i thought i thought that when they announced this show and as soon as they said secret invasion i was like whoa are we talking about the comic book series with the scrolls that you know pretty much half the freaking you know um marvel universe was replaced with scrolls correct and then I started thinking, I was like, all right, well, that's cool. We already had some really great, you know, we had like a whole 10 years of MCU movies with all the major characters that you could think of out there, except, you know, with the exception of the X-Men and Fantastic Four. Mm. So are they going to follow that same format? No. That well, was right. That was my first thought. It was like, are yeah. they going to follow that same format? Mm. Because... That would mean that they would have to bring actors back in order to show that either they were scrolls or not scrolls, things like right. that. Yeah, which like then I stuck. thought, right? <laughs> which then I thought, well, you know what? They're not going to do that with you know um, Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans or eh, none of those people. No, because it would just cost too much. So of course they went their own way with this, and like we were just talking about, I think it's kind of a slow burn, but it's still the first episode. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving it that chance, but I like the fact that they are getting into more of who Nick Fury is and how he feels about what he's done, what, you know, and before, during, and then what he's trying to do after. Yeah. Which yeah, is, saber. you know, yeah. Uh, well, also the fact that he disappeared. Mm. Um, he was trying to keep a promise to the scrolls and trying to find them a home, which he hasn't done. Nope. <laughs> it's and been 30 every, years. <laughs> right. And everything else in between that, you know? So I'm like, all right. So I'm kind of very curious to see how they're going to tackle that and hopefully tackle the character of Nick Fury, mm. which I think that, you know, especially uh, Samuel L. Jackson being such a great actor, hopefully, you know, he could pull off. Yeah. I was surprised, though, mm -hmm. with what happened at the end. <laughs> so and we'll talk oh, about that oh, yeah about yeah yeah and we'll talk about well, that in a moment spoiler full but yeah i i have thoughts about it as well of like people that were brought in you thought they were going to be there from like the beginning to the end right of the the series of show yeah the show intrigues me and yeah you know i'm interested in seeing what how you know what they're going to do with this further but yeah. what did you think well, initially, because it, it was a slow burn, I knew I was going to have to watch it again, which right. I did. And my friend Derek and his uh, co-host for TV Podcast Industries have already covered it. I didn't even listen to them and their their views of it. But a lot of people, like you said, have it, there's been a backlash online about what their expectations were. You Correct. got comic fans saying, I want a true to the comic, but nothing has ever been true adaptations from the comics from the MCU. I knew right off the bat that this was going to be more of an inter like internalized kind of show where they're going to concentrate on the core characters that we have. You know, we got Rhodey involved, obviously. Right. And then you got Fury. Fury comes back. The 
Talos character, well, the actor is not going around with his uh, makeup now because he could take human form and he took his own acting guys, as it were. <laughs> and then we got Amelia Clark in it too, which is great playing Gaia, which is his daughter. I knew that we weren't going to get all the heroes that we want as scrolls. Maybe one or two guest appearances, but we already got that first one with Rhodey. Right. And probably it had to do with budget and cost. Because oh, definitely, I have bring, to think. Bringing anybody in just to do a filler role, it was like very much like with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when Fury showed up and you saw Samuel L. Jackson's on regular channel uh, on ABC. Right. on the, and Within the first two episodes, I think. And that that was it. But I think that very much, and it, it, it gave me the feels of Falcon and a Winter Soldier a little bit, but not with all the superhuman aspects. And but but the how it was uh, like kind of like a James Bond film or things of that nature with those stories root around uh, taking over the world, you know, mm -hmm. Dr. Evil or whoever it would be that that's right. out there. But with with me, I did enjoy it in a sense. But like I said, it was a slow burn. It was something you had to pay attention to. You couldn't just leave it casually on in the background. You had to listen to the conversations that they were having. Correct. And my thought was about Fury is is that I think he ha still has PTSD from the blip. And I think that's why you, we haven't seen him. But he's been up on Saber, uh, up in space for how many years now? At least two or three years. Correct. From the time of the blip. And... I know they have scrolls up there too, and he, they're trying to find them a home. But you know, with, with the story of how it comes to be that we know is that a, a big faction is coming, and they're looking for um, total annihilation of all humans with whatever bomb or agent that they have. That you know, they actually mention it. They with Talos and with Fury when I had that conversation, and he goes, basically, it's like uh, it'll destroy your species meaning that right. they they'd all go away and that's what really ticks fury off but it but also the fact that we we find out a little bit more about talos now when they when he said his wife died i was like wait a minute but she was just in a movie with you and then it's like oh okay off camera backstory he Correct. has to explain it, and it's one of those people that were in the opposing faction, not the small group that Talos was with. And then you could see how with the espionage and the undercover and the the chameleon actions of a scroll, especially with the Ross character in the very beginning, I really enjoyed right. that because it's like you didn't know who was who, which was good because they, they kind of segued that at the very end when Fury... Maria Hill and Talos were looking for the bombs, but he, they were getting Mister X. But he knew right away. Fury knew right away to look at this one guy who was from the bar. The uh, correct. I, he was like shape shifting every time. You know, he would go behind something. Yeah, right. and and he would and he would look directly at Fury too, which is so funny. Which meant right. that he was just strictly a decoy, in my opinion. That it was, tr it's like a diversion kind of. Yeah, uh, they were tactic. just trying to, you know, make sure that they were just uh, entertaining him while uh, the real bombs were being, you know, put in place. Yeah, and the the most of the uh, the episode is a story of the faction and how they are living in Russia, and apparently a scroll's body could deal with the radiation that comes from uh, nuclear waste or whatnot. Right, and then they could uh, live in there, and they had their own little compounds. I think Gaia wasn't thinking that they would destroy human species. I think she was more of she wanted to get the scrolls their own places to live, right? By all, and also having that group that she belongs to to attack. Yeah, so, because if you think about it, I mean, Nick Fury f promised them a home. Mm -hmm. Um, and now, I mean, there is no home. There's still no home. Well, you know, what has Nick Fury been doing all this time? Is basically, I think, the answers that we're going to get. Yeah. But I think also, Gaia, I, li I love the relationship. That's one thing I definitely want the show to explore is just 
Gaia and um, his name is uh, Thalos. Thalos. Talos or Talos or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, his, I, I want to see that relationship and how that, you know, develops because as you could see, you know, you could definitely see that they're estranged from each other. Yes. But she was surprised at her mom's death and how that and the organization that she's in now, because it's basically a terrorist organization. Mm-hmm. Now she's starting to question things. And so it would be very interesting to see how you know where her character, you know, uh, goes. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one of the interesting things on that. So I, yeah. I think it's going to be more of like she'll be used to, uh, as a double agent, just to probably go in there, and then that way they could keep tabs. They would know ahead of where graphic is dealing with these uh, bombing locations or whatever he's right. looking to do, because you know they're going to try to infiltrate government as well. Yeah. Uh, they basically state that in the very beginning with the informant that was going to Ross, who he thought was Ross. Right. And that that was that whole conversation. But when Ross shot the guy, I was like, hmm. And it, the the character seemed a little bit off, too. Than the which Ross that, right. Which that part was when he was describing that. I was like, OK, that's like the comic book where in the comic book they say that, you know, the scrolls that are in the government and, high, you know, really high positions in the government Mm -hmm. uh they have replaced you know key superheroes and they're just in you know all over in society so when he said that i was like all right so we'll have to see i mean for all we know i mean i know that uh roadie's supposed to be uh don shito supposed to be in this of course yeah or he is um we did get to see roadie yeah it'll be very interesting to see if roadie is a scroll (laughs) <laughs> you know that would be uh really interesting um yeah i wouldn't put it past them that they actually do have somebody as roadie and then he's in the suit yeah like you know that that would be a really cool twist i think there's a lot of great things they could do with this show believe it or not i always thought that if they ever did secret invasion i never thought it would be a disney show i always thought it would be <laughs> a major event in movies hmm and that they would like, like the whole Kang thing. I would rather see Secret Invasion as a movie hmm. where it builds up to that major climactic part in the comic books where they finally face off the scrolls and everything else like that. Yeah. And you could have a great movie that way where you can bring in a lot of your major players. And then have them be scrolls as well. Scrolls. And then you have, you know, all of a sudden there's a ship that comes down and. You get to see all these real superheroes that have been, you know, scrolls all that time. Well, the real superheroes that were actually replaced. They oh, come yeah. Back, just like they do in the comic books, things like that. So it, it I always thought that should be a major movie event or mm-hmm. main, you know, or like one of the phases. I mean, f- this is really big, especially if they're going to try to follow anything from the comic books. Because in the comic books, this was a, a major comic book event. Yes, it was. And so they're treating this more as an espionage thing, which I which don't have is, a problem with I that. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think the well, it's kind of looked at like, it's kind of like a, what we had spoke about when we were talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Right. We have a lot of these characters that are just throwaway characters. Look at Killmonger. Look at Modoc. Look yes. at yeah, all these characters that were just either written poorly or just threw in there for one time and that's it. And then the only time we got Killmonger back was during a what if episode. Same thing right. with Ultron. Ultron was just the same way. He was just one baddie in one movie. And that was it. But with this this event, like you said, is like a major in comic book history as far as from Marvel. Right. And uh, of all things, Kevin Feige's name is on the production. It's a Kevin Feige produced. And they kind okay. of made that and, and not, not saying Marvel Disney produced. This is directly being controlled by Kevin Feige directly. Right. So it shows that he has a, a passion in what's going on. Hopefully, I mean, the way things have been going in Marvel, I mean, we know that it hasn't been uh, <laughs> all that great <laughs> and they're trying to reset and they're trying to, uh, what I would say, uh, regroup to make sure that they get uh, they throw out better quality content out there. And I'm hoping yeah. that 
you know, again, I I think one episode, you can't judge it by just one episode. And that's no. what a lot of people are doing. But like I said, I was ve- I, I, I'm very intrigued on some of the stories in there. You know, Nick Fury's, you know, journey into this. Mm-hmm. Talos and uh and Gaia's, you know, relationship on that and everything else fits. And and I get and again, spoilers for anybody out there. If you haven't, first of all, if you haven't seen the show, you should not be listening right now to this uh <laughs> podcast. Well, people but, have done it before too. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? Spoilers, you know, for, definitely spoilers for what we're about to say. But you know, the fact that they killed Maria Hill yeah, was a I, shocker to me. Well, that was a shocker to me too, but also the fact it was a gut shot it was a gut wound right remember in reservoir dogs how uh i forget it was kaitel that says to <laughs> to what's his name say you can't die from a bullet in the gut it takes days well i don't i'm like wait it a takes minute. longer longer to die from a bullet right from wound. a from a right i mean the, i don't know if she got hit in the gut or if she got hit in the i thought she got hit in the chest on the upper part of the chest no, I don't know. I have to go back and see it. <laughs> but yeah, she did die rather quickly. Yes. And but also my thought at first was like, oh, is she a scrawl? But she, you know, That's normally what I was thinking too. And then she through, didn't turn. She didn't, she didn't turn. turn into a scrawl. So yeah. uh, or maybe they might take her to Tahiti. So if you know anything about, you know, uh, <laughs> Ag- uh, what is it? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they took Coulson to Tahiti, which me- meant that he was, um, <laughs> what was it? He was cloned or he was. No, they uh, robotized him or did. Is something. that what it was? He yeah, was like, a, was, yeah, I, I fell off of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after a certain while. And when I when I went back just to watch one episode casually, right. I'm like, wait, why is he? Superhuman. Listen, they they, they jumped. On? They jumped the shark with uh with uh Agents of Shield in a, in a few episodes. That's why I lost interest in it because it was Same like here. it started as one thing, then it went to something else. Yeah, they referred to uh Agents of Shield, referred to the uh the what is it the events of New York the incident they call it yeah, yeah the incident but then. According to this, according to now, I guess Marvel that Agents of Shield is not part of this universe. It's not canon, right, or something like that. So, it's just yeah. so yeah. So in all honesty, Coulson is dead, dead to, to the world after the first right. Avengers movie. Right. So Agents of Shield was an alternate universe, maybe. <laughs> Even though we did get Lady Sif in there, and we had the Absorbing Man. We got Deathlock, but I didn't like that version of Deathlock. They did reference, you know, Project Pegasus, which I always wanted to get into. But, uh, you know, Marvel has not even tapped that just yet. But like I said, they, with with how the show is structured, it's going to be more espionage based. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be more about the scrolls being like Cobra and trying to rule the world. Uh, <laughs> with their terrorist organization of right. and try to eliminate the human species. Now you could see Talos uh, his how he feels about it. That's why he was helping. You could see uh, some reserve in in fury at this point because he'd been away for so long, and you saw how he was. He was walking with a little bit of a limp. Mm-hmm. Uh, he uh, and he's kind of weak in a sense that he's not the man he used to be. And also, there's one little thing that I like. I don't like it. He's got no patch on, no eye patch. Now, mind right. you, that's a fake eye. His eye right. travels way too much for a fake eye, in my opinion. <laughs> so they needed to fix that in CG. And yeah, that's the only really major discrepancy I have. I have no problems with seeing Samuel L. Jackson with a dead eye. But right. the fact is, is like in certain films, they made it so it looks dead. And this, it, it wasn't, it's just like, oh, it's a sclera lens and we have the scars and that's, that's good enough for yeah, us. I mean, I don't know. That's a good question because if you're blind in one eye and I mean, will the muscles still work to turn your eyes? Cause you're just blind. You're not, you know, it's not like the muscles dead. You understand what True, I'm saying? I, so, I know, you know, but so... I've seen, I, there's a YouTuber out there. She has a fake eye, uh huh, takes it in and out and stuff like that. But I, well, a fake eye is different, meaning like if you have a glass eye, that's different than just like Nick yeah. Fury. I think he still has his natural eyes, just he can't see from it anymore. Okay. 
I was I think under the impression he had no eye. <laughs> you know what? I I will have to go back to see. Uh, you got to check Miss Mar- uh, what is it, Miss Marvel, to see. Because I know in the end, he's like, well, you know, I can't deny or, you know, what happened. Because at the end of that, they had Coulson come in with these little things for his eye. They look like right, glass you're eyes. Right. You're absolutely goes, right. You got to make a, a, a choice. You have to pick one out. And he was waiting on it for so long. But, right. Yeah, that was my only. That was the only thing that, that took was your me, only. Yeah. Uh, that took me out of the show, along with, you know, Maria Hill and being disappointed because oh. Colby Smulders was such a great actor. In yeah. the series and in the MCU movies, it would have been interesting to also see their relationship because, I mean, from you could tell that, uh, you know, they're good friends. That's they... the one person that he truly will trust in the world. Yes. And, you know, so there was that little conversation. It was like, oh, I thought our, I think, Sunday uh, breakfast, you know, th- yeah, there's no, there's not supposed to be any, um, nothing hit not that the truth you know we're supposed to tell each other the truth yes and that was something that i wish they explored a little more mm-hmm. you know that relationship and maybe they might do it with some flashbacks or something or but i don't know the fact that they killed her right away i, I just kind of like oh wow yeah maybe I, you should have done you should have done that maybe towards the end or the middle at of least the series you know, yeah. yeah like it's only six episodes but even still yeah do it towards the end you know give her keep giving her it's a, a job. lot let me tell you i mean that this this whole event is a lot to just put in six episodes it is it is a lot but also they i think well they're talking about the second season but this also dips its toes into the mcu itself in the movies because right. they're looking to explore this because not just the kang being an issue but also not shield anymore but saber which is mm-hmm. supposed to be sword, everybody. We all talked about this right. when we did WandaVision. But they literally are just doing this to pepper it in. I think this is, this is I hate using the, the term long con, but that's literally what they're going to be doing. They're going to go in for this long con because this is like the first step into it to introduce us to it. And right. then over the course of whatever phase this is, phase five, I believe, they're going to, continue it on down the road like i said before key aspects of it that i like one one moment that i saw and i did like that that bar scene where they're actually there with chess (laughs) and i just love how he how uh fury talks about when he bought everybody a drink and he goes how do you think we kept the cold war cold and not on that, fire that was actually yeah that was actually pretty cool i mean but the fact is is that you know he talked about you know it's like how it's like well i have to be the spook that i am and she goes and he goes she he goes she's he's like you can't say that i can't yeah. <laughs> i like that they threw that little in there <laughs> yeah it's just and again i'm i'm happy for the for the series i think the the series will pro- hopefully explore more of his past yeah more of the things that he has done he is you know he's like you know it's like tony stark said one time he's like he's not just a spy he's the, the spy. spy yes you know so hopefully the fact that he could actually know when a human is lying yeah, yeah. he goes i know that i know i can't spot a scroll in a heartbeat but i could tell when a human's lying Correct. And that's that's pretty cool. That's very divisive for him. I honestly hope that they they really explore some of these things. I, I believe they have to. I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah. I thought, you know, Gaia, you know, uh, what's the actress name again? Um, Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. I think she did pretty well on that, too. Yeah. Well, so they I'm were hoping... pushing this on her character, too. A right. lot of people wanted to see that. They're like, oh, Game of Thrones, Amelia Clark. She's already got the star power within her name alone to attract a draw. But the guy who played Talos. Right. I wanted to see it because of him. And then I was like, great. Oh, he could walk around as he is and not have to worry about (laughs) looking like Fury or whatever. Right. He could be his own character or not under the scroll makeup, which I'm sure is within their budgeting is expensive to do. That that's why they're what you only see them for the most part when they're dead, or only when yeah. They do a I mean, quick like change. when they went to like you know when they went to like I don't know the the, the scroll uh, I don't know what 
yeah, commune or whatever. Mm -hmm. You see some of them with, you know, with, uh, you know, looking like scrolls. You see others that are still human. And I was like, well, the story on that is either one or two, either one, it, because they were saying how even some scrolls don't know who are on the cover. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, maybe um, they just didn't want to, like, get themselves away on who they really were and they stayed in the human form or i think the biggest reason is budgetary you know it's like well, listen, yeah. we're going, we only have so many masks to go around <laughs> <laughs> it's like the planet of the apes back in the day when they just put rubber masks on people for long shots correct it's so. like listen you're way <laughs> back there yeah so. we're gonna give you this thing put it over your head we're going to touch it up with a little green paint in front for your face for a little bit, but that's about it. Yeah. Move your arms, you know, and grunt and that's it. But don't come <laughs> any closer than, you know, 25 yards. <laughs> but yeah, they, I, I also like the commune, but uh, to talk about that one key scene when they um, were setting up for a new soldier, they had, they call their uh, guys as shells. So they bring in this guy, and uh, that's when they start talking about taking sides, American, Russian. Right. And then he has to take that face. But they take the guy, and they put him in the same device, similar to what they had Captain Marvel in in the movie, when they were going through memories. It's a way for them to take that person's memory into their own, like sucking it up so that they could be very familiar with who Correct. the person is. Now, I now here's the uh, again. I have to watch this a second time. I think once they they got their minds, they put them in this machine that you know just kind of keeps them comatose or something like that. Yeah, like a stasis, right? right. But I, I'm guessing that the the host or the uh, the the actual copy or the real human mm -hmm. doesn't die from the fact that they're being copied. Yeah, which makes me question where's Ross because he was taken. Right. And Ross is a big person in the MCU because we've seen him in Black Panther and I think a little bit in Wakanda Forever. And he was right. in a couple of episodes of uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. especially when he talks to um, I'm forgetting her name because he's got such a weird long name. Uh, <laughs> Julie, <laughs> Julie Louis Dreyfus. Right. And um, that's what I'm referencing. Oh, but, uh, what's her name? Uh, Defontaine or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was like some weird long. It's like I, I Allegra. Like, what is Allegra. it? Allegra. Allegra something Defontaine. I forgot what it is. Yeah, it was such a weird. And then we find out, too, that they were married, too. They were divorced. Right. <laughs> that, that, and, so the question is, was he a scroll when he married her? Was he a scroll during Black Panther or Wakanda Forever? Mm -hmm. At what point did he get replaced? That's a that good question. Be very yeah, that would be a very good question there. Yeah. And just that that will be a bigger question, too, for a few others, like with Rhodey or what? who's the other? Uh, there was a senator or somebody. Dermot Mulroney was playing and he was in charge of it. And he was a little myth that uh, Fury was, you know, he came from, he left Saber. He right. dropped it. Mind you, he, that's his job. And he was just like, oh, he, he's on Earth? What? Mind you, <laughs> you know, Fury's been off world for like two or three years at this point. And we, we first heard about that he was off world for a year with with, with, with uh, Spider-Man and uh, with uh, right. Peter finding out. And he goes, no, Fury's been off world for a year. What? <laughs> <laughs> What if Spy what if Spider-Man was a uh the scroll? A scroll. Can you imagine like when the real Peter Parker goes back? He's like, What did you so, do? Yeah, so <laughs> what happened? Where's my aunt? I was like, Oh yeah, she's dead. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and why why is it that MJ doesn't know me? Oh well, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, I it's it that would be really interesting if they did something like that. Yeah, it would be. We'll we'll see. To me, uh, I I think they're gonna do it more for core specific characters. I don't Correct. think they're gonna do it for um, the very hard hitting characters that we have, like Harrison Ford being a scroll because he was Thaddeus Ross. You know that thing going hmm. on. That'd be interesting. But uh, yeah. We've already got confirmation that he's on the in the new Captain America movie with Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. Who who is again? Harrison Ford. 
Oh as, yeah, no, he he Ross. plays. Yeah, he's taking over uh, William Hurt's uh, William Hurt who uh, passed away. Yeah. So, but funny enough, in an interview when they asked him, it was like, you know about the Red Hulk, and he goes, so who? <laughs> like he didn't know any of that, or made it seem like he didn't know any of that. But then sometimes you look at certain um, pictures that are out there. Well, not pictures, like just where, whenever they mention all, you know, like all the actors and who they're playing. Mm-hmm. Harrison Ford, it says, you know, Thunderbolt Ross slash Red, Red Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> so, you know, Harrison Ford uh, probably does know that he's playing, uh, you know, Red he's Hulk. He's just playing something. stupid now because of uh, with all the stuff that Marvel was doing for years and giving people crap about it, like Ruffalo. And <laughs> right. <laughs> and of course, you know, Spider-Man himself, who who loves to spoil everybody. Oh, Tom Holland. Tom yeah, Holland is yeah. like a big uh, spoiler of everything. I think he did like um, before the movie came out, it was for Endgame. And he did something on Instagram or whatever it was. And he was holding up posters. He goes, oh, look at it. Oh, oh, oh you weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> <laughs> he screwed it up. Really, like it's the name. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's been no- like him and Mark Ruffalo are known to spill things. So. Or Ruffalo having his phone out while he's recording on Instagram or Twitter or whatever it was. And it was like the first 15 minutes of the movie that he was in. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, bro, your phone is on. <laughs> yeah, this is, that's the kind of stuff that now Marvel, I'm sure, is like, I mean. The, the NDAs are probably ironclad at this point. They're like, oh, if we're going to do this. Oh, are you no. kidding me? I guarantee you they have snipers and ninjas and all that <laughs> stuff all over the place. You know, so. Yeah, but uh, I just really enjoyed that aspect of uh, the show of how they were able to do with the personality of the person that they're they're using as a shell. Right. Plus, we get to see out of Talos his strengths for the first time in the show. So you could see he just breaks open the lock and everything. Right. Uh, not bad for a person who's 133 years old. <laughs> and apparently yeah, exactly. he's supposed to look uh, almost 40 in human years, but it looks actually closer to, closer to our age, like maybe 50 or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that, that we all know is that scrolls do have good amount of strength. Now, the question is, uh, I forgot in the comic, did they were they able to mimic... The I know a certain specific section of scrolls were able to mimic powers, superpowers. Like the super scroll was the one and only that I always remembered. I didn't really Correct. read Secret Invasion. And I think the super scrolls are the ones that have powers, but the super scrolls, from what I remember, I think mimic the same powers as the Fantastic Four. The super scroll, yeah, it's one right. Guy. I don't know if they actually mimicked other powers or something like that so that would be also very interesting to see on how they're going to do that yeah that that, you know? that was my concern because my i knew that they took the the visage of like um spider woman jessica drew uh they uh, they did spider-man in the comic too i believe right and a few other characters there was one where i saw it was a weird panel that i had seen that somebody put on twitter or instagram and it was a scroll they were dressed up as somebody and then they wind up shooting reed richards and he just goes spaghetti all over the place <laughs> and yeah. i was like oh i said that's how deep this goes but the thing is is that you know getting heavy hitters like that they're not gonna get but i'm curious if they're able to say hey these specific ones are able to mimic super powered beings if we're able to get in touch or within the vicinity of them instead of just looking like them they could actually do that Now, I would be surprised if anybody was able to go to, let's say, of all things, we don't have him in the MCU yet, Wolverine. (laughs) It's like his claws. And remember that one scene in X-Men, the first X-Men, when Mystique gets the claws out as Wolverine. Right. And Oh, yeah. And Wolverine cuts the claws from her. Yes. Yeah. At that point, you're like, so what did he cut? (laughs) Yeah. Was it a nail? (laughs) <laughs> was it a nail or something, right? So I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. Like I said, I think Super Scroll, because Super Scroll in the comic books, I think is one scroll only. It is. It is only one scroll. But there was right. talk that there are specialty scrolls that have the ability. They're a little bit more enhanced. 
in the uh in the advertisement for it or like you know like the uh, trailers for it you do see one of the characters that looks like he has some kind of special ability yeah yeah and i'm so. sure we're gonna get more information regarding this as the episodes go but overall and like i said to you it's like my i only had those two issues maria hill and fury's eye for the most part the the episode as a whole and how they they were able to work it through at, through the espionage I right. thought it was really good and tailored. And now, mind you, you have to be very disciplined to sit there to watch and be, you know, keep a trained eye and listen. A lot, not a lot of people. Everybody just wants the entertainment aspect. And I think that's where it fell short for a lot of people. They they were like, oh, this, I don't want that. Because a lot of people still had the bad taste. Uh, I know people that didn't like Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But they, right. they, they felt that had to do with the whole... Um, with the Me Too movement, mm-hmm. uh, not Me Too movement, but uh, the pride and everything that's going on because they felt it was a bit racist or what. I'm like, mm, you know what? It's needed. That story needed to be done, especially right. with, with the uh, black Captain America that we never got. And I'm glad we got that story. And on top of that, you know, about how anthony mackie's captain america will be and he's he's got to go through that adversity with people who just don't respect it and i well i show a lot of uh encouragement for him as the the new captain america because he has no powers literally but a lot of people were hating on the show because of those of those things that they brought up right yeah i mean it was supposed to be like a i mean it was i think that would have been a great show um so here's a comparison that i heard mm-hmm. that this might be like the Star Wars one that just came out was it called uh, Andor? Andor, yep. Right, that was so very Andor, similar. Andor supposed to be, you know, Andor turned out to be, of course, I think a phenomenal series. Even though I still don't like the Diego Luna character, <laughs> but the reg- the rest of the, uh, I think the rest of the show really came along very well, and it became this whole espionage behind the scenes of like the Empire kind of thing right. and things yeah. like that. So it it became very intriguing, and, and that's what people thought this was going to be and i'm like all right so rogue what, how many episodes rogue had like 12 episodes of this andor one? yeah andor i'm sorry yeah, yeah andor it, was, like 12 it, was, it was maybe about close to 10 uh disney tries to keep it no nip. they 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 went far with that one i believe so, so but the thing is that they they had a lot more episodes to actually explain explain, explain it yeah. while this one is only going to be done with six episodes. So that will be very... Uh, I think they just wanted to dip their toe with this, with a six-episode show, just right. to get it started. Yeah, Andor Honestly. was 12... Uh, so I just looked at it. Andor was 12 episodes. Okay. This is half. Yeah. So, But people are expecting this to be like Andor, and I'm like, well, first of all, it's still the first episode, so let's see where it goes. Mm-hmm. And they're good hour long episodes i think it was like 52 minutes complete correct so no well no that was more than that um so no, this one is this episode that we're covering now uh for... it was more than that it was like an hour and something episode really yeah i looked at the timer on my uh disney plus and it's uh, oh 50 I, minutes because i thought i saw that <laughs> let me see something very quickly no you're right it says clocked in at 54 minutes yeah. You're absolutely right on that. Okay. So Yeah, it's my, it's just under an hour, but you know, I think they're trying to keep it that way. And I actually made that comment when Steve and I were covering like, you know, WandaVision and those particular shows before. Right. Where some of them were really, really short, and you're like, you wanted more. And I thought back then too, with the amount of episodes that they had, it's like, how could they cover that in that X amount of episodes? And I'm like, well, they got away with it. They were able to make it work, but they were only they were shorter episodes. But with this, right, I, I feel that a good hour is a good enough time to have, especially with no commercial. You have to factor in this is true with no commercials. So it's almost yeah. like a mini movie, like with Werewolf by Night, where that was within an hour or so when we did that i thought yeah you know what i'll be very honest with you. i thought they did very well and if they keep it an hour i think that's what marvel needs to do is when they do these uh marvel shows it's like listen we're gonna keep it all within the same time because i hated the fact that some of them were like you know like in some of the shows oh it's only 20 minutes 
Then other shows, it's all oh, now it's 40 minutes, you yeah. know, and it's like, come on, you <laughs> know, so a format, please <laughs> stick to yeah. a format. So if they keep it an hour, hopefully, you know, within, you know, in a five hour span mm. or well, I mean, it's 54 minutes, let's say, you know, technically uh, four and a half hours. I'm hoping that within ho- four and a half hours, I could really do Explain this uh, show justice. Yeah. 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 So. Same here. I'm looking forward to more good stuff that they have. Correct. But uh, as far as uh, anything else, uh, that was it for me as far as like highlights and thoughts. Uh, did you have yeah, anything no, else? That's pretty much uh, that was, I mean, the only highlight that I had was, um, I can't say I had like a lot of highlights. I'll be very honest. I did, like when I watched the show, it was uh, like, again, pretty good. I just, I didn't have anything that the only thing that stood out to me was, of course, Maria Hill's, you know, death scene. That was the biggest thing for me. And the biggest one of the biggest controversies right now out there is the title treatment to this show, which, oh, yeah. of course, find <laughs> out that this was done through AI using the uh, the uh, AI, um, I guess, program called Mid Journey, hmm. which does, you know, um, images, you know. And so a lot of people have been criticizing that, especially Disney. And at a time where, you know, we're having a writer strike where one of the I, I, one of the things that, you know, the writers want to make sure uh, that does not get used to write any of the shows is AI. So here it is, Disney doing images in AI. <laughs> and and I think what they were trying to do with this is say, hey, it's kind of a metaphor for the show, which is here's something trying to impersonate or impersonate and kind of tell you what a human is supposed to look like, Mm -hmm. because that's the one thing that mid journey and other AI programs are not very good at doing certain little things. Like when they draw hands, it'll draw like an extra finger or it will draw, you know, or, or, or maybe only have three fingers. And sometimes, you know, like the human anatomy kind of gets thrown off because ai is still learning how to do that and you kind of see a little bit of that in the images on the opening credits Hmm. and i think there was a metaphor of like hey it is an alien thing trying to imitate a human and what they can do yeah but a lot of people criticized it because like you know what you could still you could have still gotten artists to kind of you know fake it or whatever it is and pay those artists but instead you went ahead and did it with you know, mid journey and stuff like that. So this is also another interesting development that I'm kind of sticking. I want to stick around for and see how that goes, because I want (laughs) to see how Disney gets their uh, foot out of their mouth by doing, you know, what they did. It makes sense. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way too. It's like, because people are against it. Even some, yeah, like you said, a lot of people professionally are like, no, no, no. And then next scene, right. out of the blue, they're utilizing it. And so, out of the blue, they're utilizing it, which of course, look, there's a guild for writers. There's a guild for directors. There's a guild for actors. Yeah. And now there are people going, are, you know, these, some of these, uh, artists and special effect artists and all that stuff, you know, would they unionize in order to make sure that, Hey, this is the kind of thing that we don't want to happen. Hmm. You know, so it, it, very interesting. It's a, uh, that's one of those things that when it did happen and I heard about it, I was like, whoa, <laughs> at a time like now with, yeah. again, this writer strike and how things are going, this was not the right time to for Disney to do that. So no. it's more of like watching an accident and you're just sitting there and saying, <laughs> I got to see what happens. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, that's all I have for it. I mean, it's uh, it's a good show. I think people should check it out and give it a chance. And yeah. you know what? If you want to criticize the crap out of it, give it about three or four episodes before you're like, listen, this shit hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Give it a shot first. Give it a couple of uh, viewings or a few viewings. First few episodes, because th- some things don't start out well. But by the end of it, they're boom. They're 100%. Yeah, correct. That is correct. So, yeah, that's all I have for it. (laughs) Well, to let you folks know, yeah, I did post about this and that we were covering it. We also are going to be covering The Flash 2023, but I said to leave some feedback if you can. Well, unfortunately, Steve couldn't make it tonight. He he had some stuff going on. He was hurting a bit. So uh, he left some feedback (laughs) just so he could get on the podcast in some way, which is cool. 
So uh, hopefully he can come on for the second episode of uh, Secret Invasion when we cover that and or The Flash. He had right. said to me that he hasn't seen it yet. So that's why <laughs> we haven't covered it yet. I oh, guess. The Flash? Yeah. yeah. But uh, this is what Steve has to say. Hey, Pamela, this is Steve. And uh, sorry that I couldn't be there for the podcast today for Secret Invasion episode one. Uh, I'm just, it's a whole health thing. But uh, I wanted to share a couple of my thoughts that I did have. I was a little confused at the beginning with Martin Freeman and Percod and all that, because when Martin Freeman gets shot, he gets shot in the back, and when the body turns over, there's obviously a wound, a blood stain on the front of his shirt. So that means the bullet went all the way through. How did it not hit the other guy? Anyway, that's my one quibble of the episode. My other question is, uh, when did when did Nick Fury get a second eye? Did he miss <laughs> something in one of the other movies? Did he come back from the blip with an extra eye? I, I'm just not seeing. Did I miss something in one of the shots of him up on the space station? I don't know. And what does Saber stand for again? You may have already talked about this, no. Mark. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I did love it, and I will uh, be there for uh, the rest of the, the season. And hopefully we'll get more seasons because it uh, really was a, a really cool, cool show. Uh, too bad uh, Martin Freeman and Kobe Smolders were just guest stars for the first episode. But uh, maybe we'll get some flashbacks uh, with Kobe. I don't know. Um uh, Loved her since since uh, How I Met Your Mother, so can't wait to see uh, where she goes on from here. All right, uh, talk to you later. All right, Steve. <laughs> yeah, he had the <laughs> same idea I did with the eye. <laughs> yeah, so well, I guess that's something we'll have to see. Uh, you know, if there if there's an explanation for that in the uh, in the show. If not, it's just one of those uh, I think creative choices that I said. Listen, we're gonna just give him an eye. Yeah, yeah, could it be? Or it's like, oh, we have this healing thing now that works out and. Yeah, we took it from a mutant. We took his blood. And <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely see that. That was it for uh, any kind of feedback. That was just from Steve. But I wanted to share that for you listeners out there to show you that Steve, yes, is still around. He will be back and he will be on more stuff. It's just that he's got to go through some of the stuff. I've been going through some of my own stuff, too. And I heard at times I'm hoping to get back to where I need to be. But with that, we'll go right into some news. And the first news, well, this will be a question for you, Rob. Did mm-hmm. you like the Craven trailer? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, again, this is something <laughs> that I've heard diehard fans, first of all, hated. <laughs> no, I don't like the idea myself, honestly. To me, it looked uh, when I finally got to see this, I'm like, okay. I see where they're going with this. The yeah. only thing that's making me want to go out to the theater to see this, and it's probably only for one small v- portion of it, and they're probably teasing us in the trailer with this. We finally get Spider-Man and the Hulk's villain in this. We get the Rhino. Yeah. And that's making me want, because he's one of my favorite villains that were there, and they kind of screwed him up. And Amazing Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Uh, not was it Tobey Maguire? No, Amazing not, Spider-Man uh, was uh, with uh, Garfield. Andrew Garfield, right? Yeah, with Andrew Garfield, and that whole metal suit, robot suit, did yeah, not scream to me as Rhino. Very much how the Shocker was given to us uh, actually in Homecoming. I was not too uh, happy because I would like to have seen him in a suit, and apparently they did shoot some stuff which showed him in a real suit with the shocking right glove but at least they went all out with that a little bit to some degree to show and the vulture to me was okay because i can't assume a guy going out there with a green leotard with some wings on it but yeah i thought the i thought the vulture was uh was always a really cool character that they did and and their take on it i think was fine mm. like you were saying i think the rhino the rhino could have been okay as a mechanical suit it's the design that they came up with that just sucked yeah it was like that being said right but that being (laughs) said they're coming out now with you know this whole thing with uh with whoever the actor is you know turning i guess into the rhino yeah and but my biggest thing with uh with craven is like i don't get why is it that sony so i know sony's trying to do their sinister six yeah you know, movie, and they also want to do their own Spider-Man stuff. But if, if look, 
Venom, the first Venom, was just okay. Yeah. That was a fluke. Venom Carnage was just a horrible, horrible movie. Yeah. And then we got Morbius. Morbius. Yeah. Was another horrible movie. movie. Yeah. Sony has to understand. And again, because I, I keep saying, how is there such a disconnect from the people who did the Spider Verse movies? And they're doing, the, you know, these uh, live actions. That are you know, yeah, they're doing the live action stuff. It's like they need to talk to each other. Yeah. But that being said, I don't understand why they're doing this whole thing with the villains <laughs> when they have the option to believe it or not, if they really want to do their own Spider-Man universe. I think the Sinister Six should have just been one of those things that they should have like say, you know what? We have to start making actual spider-man movies that are actually good for us to then get that but instead they're starting with the bad guys <laughs> and then after what after that they're gonna do what get themselves their own spider-man and then screw that up yeah as well, they've done before yeah they they're probably gonna relaunch do whatever and there's still talks about andrew garfield coming back as right as a spider-man tom holland Basically stated recently, and it's a little bit of news of him taking um, a year off break from doing anything Spider-Man related. Now, right. Mind you, there's talks that he was on set for the next Captain America movie. So hmm. there's that That's possibility. And then obviously... Uh, with all the pushback and everything that's coming from the WGA strikes, and now they're talking about actor strikes now coming up. So a <laughs> lot of stuff is is going on. That's going to be the that's going to be the worst one because you know without writers you could still probably do something. That's even been without the written. writers. Yeah, without directors, sure you could still do something, but you have no actors, you can't do shit. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it, and. I'm starting to see that. And I just like, I'm afraid for certain properties that like shows and stuff like that. Right. Especially the low tiered shows that are on cable that are hard to produce too. And some of them are knocking it out of the park, like the TV show from and yellow jackets. And you know, even though it's a, it's a showtime property, right. but I don't want to see what I had to deal with way back when when we had that writer strike we lost a ton of tv shows and they were really good now heroes the first two seasons great the last <laughs> the yeah. last one was uh not as good but i was hoping that with the fourth season it they if they did come back we'd get some sort of you know phew they fixed that issue but no, we lost shows like that and i was right. i was a little hey, upset. listen on the first writer strike i mean that's one of the reasons well it's one of many reasons why the Transformers movies didn't work mm. was due to, I think, I think one of them was coming off of a writer strike or something like that. Or I don't, I don't remember what it was, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I think Hollywood really needs to maybe, maybe having all these strikes is a good thing. Maybe they just need a reset. They need to re we reevaluate to the business, <laughs> reevaluate what's going on because yeah. the business model has changed so much. and. It has been proven, with the exception of Netflix, that streaming models don't work. They are not a money maker, and they're actually destroying the way entertainment is being done and how a lot of these artists can get paid and things like that. The streaming model just doesn't work. And Netflix is the only one that knows how to make it work. Everybody else has sucked them on it, you know, so... I think Hollywood really needs to do a reset, and maybe this is maybe this might be a good thing to have all these strikes because then finally something could be like, all right, let's get our head out of our butts and just, you know, start doing what we need to do in order to uh, come out with good quality stuff, but at the same time, take care of those who are making the uh, content. Yeah. So I believe that Craven is a, <laughs> it's a uh, product of just bad decisions of I all mean, movies that should go direct to streaming. <laughs> Correct. I, 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 you know what? I, I think all the villains should have probably gone straight to streaming mm -hmm. models, and that's it. But to have an entire feature film made out of it, yeah, it's yeah. And Craven uh, isn't Craven supposed to be Russian? I don't. I, I know his father in the movie has an accent. A lot of people are talking about. Uh, what is it? Aaron Taylor Johnson. 
Right. And he he's got pretty much almost what similar to an English but American style mm-hmm. accent because Yeah, like no right, but he has no accent whatsoever. Yeah. Which um I believe Craven the Hunter was supposed to have an accent. He does have Everything... a Russian accent, but and I'm like, you know what? I think like I don't know, 30 years ago, I think Russell Crowe would have played an excellent uh Craven. Craven the Hunter. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. And he's yeah. in the movie, too. Yeah. Of all things. He is. And he's the only one with that Russian accent and stuff like that. Yeah. And and you know what? I think somebody like Russell Crowe would have been a person to pull this off. The fact that he this guy's getting his powers off of, you know, lion's blood, unless this line is irradiated <laughs> or is a mutant lion or something like that. I, yeah, I, it's kind of yeah. wacky and how they coming up with it. Like I said, the only draw to me is Rhino and my feeling. I'll wait. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to wait to see it. And it comes to that point. I I know if I review it, I will tear it apart. And, oh, my God. But, Are you kidding me? That'll go right into uh, my list of uh, Fantasy Fix <laughs> Movie Edition, where I'll be like, it's time to discuss this garbage. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's uh, it'll be very interesting to see what happens there yeah. on that one. Well, we finally got our final four for the Fantastic Four casting. So I think that's pretty good news. I have not heard anything about this, but so this is going to be new to me, too. Well, the one I don't like is Mr. Fantastic. And that's Adam Driver. So yes. he's playing Reed Richards. I don't see it, but a lot of people do. Will I be OK with it in time? Probably. Margot Robbie as Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, which is really cool. Really? Yeah. Huh. An actor that I'm not familiar with, uh, Paul Meskel as Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Right. And Davi Diggs as Ben Grimm, the thing, which Davi. I can see. I, 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 I think he can pull it off because obviously the thing, once he transforms into the thing, he can't turn back. He's just a voice. Correct. So, but the thing is, I could see Davi Diggs and I, I think he'll have that uh, enthusiasm. So I think that's pretty cool. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, Like I said, I have not heard anything on this. I haven't heard anything on who's going to do what or who's playing who. (laughs) I know that they wanted to, like, maybe at one point, Emma Stone to be. uh... Oh, they offered it. She rejected it. She wanted too much money. Uh, (laughs) What do you want? She's got Oscar. (laughs) As soon as they get an Oscar, that's exactly it. Why? I don't know why they just didn't keep. Who's his name? Uh, Sudeikis? Uh, Not Sudeikis. Um. Kransky as Mr. Fantastic. What's his name? Oh, the original guy. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Quiet Place himself. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They they couldn't. Well, also he's a director, and they probably did offer it, but he probably was just like, "I'll do it as an alternate." <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be sucked in or tied into this multi. Uh, movie thing kind of like how michael shannon just made a a, a comment recently about his reprisal as zod in the what, flash. what did he say he said it felt like it, he was like he was an action figure being put moved around a lot and that's why he didn't do anything episodically or like a star wars film because he didn't uh-huh. want to get signed into a contract and locked into it but i i understand it from his point of view too because he didn't want to he he's very much one of your actors actor in my opinion mm-hmm. with michael shannon he does one off specific characters and i was surprised to see him in uh man of steel as odd originally right the fact that they brought him back for the flesh was really really good but that's something that you'll we'll get into a little bit more yeah later. we'll get into on, 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 on the other <laughs> on the next podcast with the flesh 2023 right. Less bit of news, which I thought was pretty funny. And then somebody said, well, take it with a grain of salt, Mark. And I'm like, yeah, but I want it to be true. Even though we got Batfleck in the flesh, but there was reports that he was on set for a movie that's currently in production called Deadpool 3. Who's this? Ben Affleck. He w- the thing is, you have a lot of 
actors that sometimes visit sets just to visit just to them. Just visit, too. And that's what right. I said, so th- too. That doesn't mean that, you know... I well, mean, Ben. I would love to see Ben Affleck in... Um, as Daredevil? In the, MD, <laughs> in the MCU or something like that. <laughs> Listen, here's how, here's how I see it. There's this whole MCU and DCU thing where, like, you know, especially with James Gunn leaving the DCU, he had actors that left the MCU part of it mm-hmm. and followed him. But I would love to see, you know, those actors that honestly, like I would love for the MCU to grab Henry Cavill and use him in such an iconic way that freaking Warner Brother goes, shit, we should have kept him as Superman. I think they did do that. I think he was up for something. I heard it on uh, Everything Always and on YouTube. He he usually gets all the news and it's always daily with him. He'll put out like an episode every three hours <laughs> here's an update right. on this uh, marvel news or whatever he mentioned recently on one of them that um there were talks with henry cavill to being in a marvel right some sort of property which I would tru- be good like, yeah i truly believe that what you know marvel should do is like oh you don't want henry cavill you don't want um you know some of these good actors that you've had we'll take them and we'll you know we'll give them some great parts and because you know what i mean as bad as as i think you know i think just the mcu needs to get back to being what you know what they were doing before yeah dc is just a fucking train wreck it is a train wreck and oh my I'm god i'm hoping james gunn will fix it i you know what i'm gonna be that type of person that that first movie that he, it comes out under him it better be impressive yeah that's because well, if it's yeah, not then yeah if it's not then yeah i don't see it <laughs> but you know, we could get into that, I guess, with the Flash movie and stuff yeah, like that, where will. things are going. We'll, yeah, yeah we got going, more so. time with more news. Right. But Any uh, other news? That that was it for news that I had that I thought I'd discuss. Okay. But other than that, well, uh, well, obviously, we're at the point where we're coming towards the end of the podcast. So podcast recommendations or uh, you want to plug what you get, what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, so Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. I was supposed to come up with an episode, <laughs> and uh, we had I had some technical difficulties, so we're gonna have to re-record it again. But for <laughs> anybody out there, uh, we are doing an episode on the top five movie composers of all time, and yeah. instead of doing it as a draft, we're just doing it as a list and going over that. So that should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, uh, you know, I could get that. We just have to re-record it again. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to consider the first one a, a dress rehearsal and then <laughs> do this one. And, you know, but that should be a lot of fun. And the great thing about that is that we will be reviewing some of the music of these uh, composers. So, you know, there will be some music on that podcast. It should be it should be a really fun episode. And hopefully those who are out there, if you listen to it, you know, give us your feedback. I would definitely like to hear what you guys thought about it. But, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're going on. And uh, we're about to record our top five <laughs> draft on Harrison Ford movies next week. Awesome. And we will then have that uh, available for the following week. Uh, of course, all getting ready towards the whole Indiana Jones and the uh, Dial of Destiny movie, awesome. which yeah. hopefully uh, I get to see next week and have my opinions and thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, uh, one recommendation and this is for uh, a podcast that my friend Jay just put out. She's not affiliated with any network or anything, but uh, she was uh, a guest on podcast with with Jason, and they covered, uh, yeah, Dead to Me, I think it was. Okay. And uh, she was on there for a while, so she wanted to venture out to her own thing with podcasts. So she's doing her own podcast called Shall We Compare The, a remake and sequel podcast. And okay. uh, the first episode is up, but you have to look for it through um, through Apple Podcasts, unfortunately, Ed, because she's using a um, a new uh, a new podcast uh, company for distribution. She's not using Buzzsprout or Red Circle like oh, okay. uh, we generally do. But uh, she's you could easily find it on Apple Podcasts. But the first episode that she did cover was the 1960 Psycho to the Gus Van Sant 1998 version of Psycho. Right. So uh, I suggest everybody go check that out if they can, because uh, I think it's interesting. It's cool. a good take on it. 
You can hear me as well on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, as always. Jerry and I, and just like Rob said, he, he had to re-record for his. I have to re-record for mine, and I will be doing that tomorrow after <laughs> after we've done this particular podcast. So we, we recorded the thing from 2011, so we covered that, Jerry and I. But I only recorded on my side with Audacity. I didn't get the Zoom recording, and Jerry didn't have it on his side. So we have to re-record it, which is fine, but it's so embarrassing it was, it was funny yeah it was funny how you uh you messaged me saying oh my god you'll never guess what i did and then i would say a day later then i told you what happened to yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> i was like well okay everybody's having technical difficulties so yeah it, it happens every once in a while this just like this is the first time in like a seven years that that actually happened to me where it's like i forgot to hit a record button come on <laughs> but whatever so. we'll, we'll be doing that we'll get that out to you as soon as possible we're still looking to get people to be on for space camp i know my friend rima is interested in it so just look out for that stuff when it's available we'll keep you apprised about it but if you would like to send any feedback you're more than welcome to uh we can be heard on spotify google play apple Podcasts, or whatever co- podcast player of choice is all you have to do is search pounds the pixels podcast if there's a review or a rating, please do so if you can. It'd be really helpful, especially in Apple Podcasts, because apparently that's the best way to get heard from. Because right. a lot of people use uh, a lot of people use Apple products. You could check out our website. Nothing's still there, but panels to pixels podcast dot com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our Facebook group is probably the easiest. And like I said before, I did put the image out there. Please leave a comment below. So all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. You can go to our Twitter and you can talk to us directly if you want at panels, the number two pixels. Email is the best way to get me uh, anything. So you can easily email us your thoughts, type them out. We'll read them. We'll make a comment as we're recording. Or uh, you could just record yourself and add it as an attachment. We'll play it and we'll comment it as well. And you could be part of the podcast that way you can just email us at panels two pixels one at gmail.com that's panels the to is spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com we could be heard on youtube or seen on youtube as well uh, all you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast you could easily click a subscribe button or you could just Choose thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Hit that little ringy dingy thing on the side and it'll keep you uh, aware of when a new episode comes up. Yeah. And if you can, uh, you know what? I'll be very interested to hear what y- anybody out there thinks where they think that's, you know, secret invasion is going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please let us know what surprises you think are going to show up or what would you like to see happen, especially for those of you out there who have. Uh, read the comic books you know what aspect of the comic book you wish they included so yeah let us know well that covers it for this episode of panels of pixel podcast thanks everybody for listening i'm mark and i am robert same podcast different panel different pixel this was panels for pixels and we'll see you on the next panel goodbye everybody take care